Then we wrap that in a savory corn tortilla with a middle layer of Monterey Jack cheese. Awesome! <laughs> And it gets even awesomer when we take a deep-fried gordita shell, smear on a layer of our special guacamolito sauce, and wrap that around the outside. This is pretty big. It gets bigger. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I want to try something a little different. Why don't you pan up a little bit? A little bit more. A little bit more. Whoa. I know that was a little shocking, but uh, I wanted to tell you guys something face-to-face. I wanted to say thank you so much for helping me reach 1 million subscribers. Whether you liked, shared, watched, subscribed, made your spouse watch it, thank you so much. I never thought I would reach this milestone and I could not have done it without you. I also want to extend a special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping make the show happen every week and for helping me pay my rent and stuff. As a special thank you for all of your love and support over the past year, I want to take you guys out of your usual 37 degrees of visibility and into the world. Welcome to my home kitchen. This is where I make the show every week. I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the place. If you want to see the regular episode, just want to see me make the Taco Town Taco, just hit the tag right here and you'll skip right there. Otherwise, let's take a look. This is my neighborhood, Harlem, New York. This is the fridge, which you normally can't see because it's behind you. And then this is where all the magic happens. No, no, no. no. The, the, this is where all the magic happens. This is where I lay down the dulcet tones that serve as the backdrop for Binging with Babish each week with a bit more intonation than I would normally use in real life. This is me getting ready to bike to East Harlem because I forgot to get corn husks. For authenticity. Yes. And this is the Binging with Babish kitchen. This is where I make the show every week with all the ingredients that I need, or most of them, tucked to the side where you can't see them from this camera. Over here we have the gas stove, which a lot of people wonder why don't I use that ever? Because I would have to reset all this camera and lights every time I wanted to saute something. So I use an induction cooktop over here. A lot easier for me, very accurate. I highly recommend them. Over here we've got the bar. This is where I keep the liquor. As you can see, I heavily favor brown stuff. These are some of my favorites here. Highland Park, Basil Hayden's. Big proponent of disposable gloves. So I have a pack of a thousand of these because anytime you want to butcher meat, handle meat, handle something messy, you can just throw one of these on, do what you got to do, whip it off, and into the trash. This is a 1.5 inch thick all-American piece of maple made by John Booz. I shoot it on a Sony a7S fed into an Atomos uh, 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 4K HD external recorder. Hey, look at this, yeah. huh? <laughs> That's my uh, cameraman and uh, attorney. <laughs> this lovely wood-burned pizza peel that was sent to me by Janet Cruz. Thank you very much, Janet. This is beautiful and I love it. And it's the centerpiece of my whole organization. As you can see, I keep all of my cookware right directly above and right directly below. Where you- <laughs> You got a sink. This is where I do the dishes. It's a sink. This is, this is a dishwasher, which in New York City is an unspeakable luxury, so I shouldn't even be showing you that I have this. Let's answer some fan mail. Adarsh asks, what is the secret to growing a beard as glorious as yours? Well, Adarsh, it's two things, really. Genetics, which thankfully I have on my side, not up here, but down here, and regular trimming, shampooing, conditioning, oiling, and brushing. To each their own asks, what other tattoos do you have? And I'm not going to show you this. You've seen enough of me today. Izka Manomi asks, what has been your biggest failure? And I've got to say, that's my Frasier episode, which still lies at the bottom of my episode graveyard. I made a full five course Fraser meal with the roasted Cornish game hens with Fraser's signature pomegranate sauce and beet carpaccio and a whole host of other things. And we got a little too drunk and rowdy and we had to can the whole episode. So I'm still really hurt by that. So I'm holding off on doing a Fraser episode for at least another two years. So for, it, for today's episode, it's got 15 different layers. So I have to have a lot of things at the ready here. I've got a bunch of chalupas that I stole from Taco Bell earlier today. Not stole, but I went in there and asked them for just chalupa shells and they gave me a hard time. Corn husks are not edible, so I don't know why they're in there, but we're, we've got to be accurate. So we're going to have to like put it in there and then like pull it out with our teeth as we're trying to eat it. Two gallons 
of vegetable oil because we're going to be deep frying this gigantic, horrible thing. Um, what the hell else is in this kitchen that people want to see? Why do you guys watch this show even? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I guess that's it. Let's take it back to uh, camera one. Ah, home sweet home. I'm in my pajamas recording voiceover and you're watching me make crepe batter, which if you want to learn how to do, just go to my website where I'm going to post all the recipes from today's episode. I don't want to bog you down with all the boring details of the 15 different layers that we're dealing with in this taco. We're starting off by pre-making our crepes and pancakes, making sure not to add our frozen blueberries to the pancake batter. Do as I say, not as I do. Hold your breath, say a little prayer, and flip it. Now that my blood pressure is up 10 points, let's start stuffing this taco. According to the Taco Town commercial, it goes ground beef, tomatoes, lettuce, a southwestern sauce which I've improvised using mayo, sour cream, and spices, and the only reliable source of neon yellow nacho cheese that I know of, Lunchables. Save the Capri Sun for another time and harvest a few tablespoons of the sticky yellow stuff. Next up, a flour tortilla with refried beans. This is the classic double-decker formation, followed by a toasted corn tortilla with Monterey Jack cheese. Then we need to dress our chalupa with guacamolito sauce and place the whole affair inexplicably in a corn husk along with some pico de gallo that we're going to bake while we get the European side of our taco ready to go. Start by spreading some scrambled eggs inside of our authentic Parisian crepe along with Gruyere cheese, merguez sausage, and sautéed portobello mushrooms. Yes, these are baby bella mushrooms, which are just portobellas that haven't grown up yet. This thing's starting to get a little ridiculous. It only makes sense that we're going to throw it inside of a pizza. I know the commercial says Chicago deep dish style, but that would be impossible to fold, so we're going with a frozen pizza, followed finally by our gargantuan blueberry pancake. Next up, we're making a simple beer batter, which starts off with equal parts cornstarch and flour, a bunch of eggs, and a bunch of beer. Like I said, all the recipes will be available on my website. Check it out, bingingwithbabish.com. Seems like an awful waste of beer, but I can sense greatness in the near future. Whisk together until smooth, and it's time to heat a gigantic vat of oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry it's hard to see, but I'm basically taking the taco and placing it into a large casserole full of batter, covering it with more batter, and very, very carefully dropping it into the hot oil, complete with wooden skewers to hold the entire abomination together. After basting with oil long enough to make sure that the structural integrity is up to spec, we're going to pull the skewers and flip the whole gosh darn thing over. Over, frying for about 25 minutes all told. While that cools for a minute, we're going to ready our commemorative tote bag, fill it with spicy vegetarian chili, and nestle our labor of love inside. Who knew that tacos could be so convenient? So you remember last week when I said it was the cross section to end all cross sections? Well, I lied. This is the very antithesis of a raised game pie, and it's got the layers to prove it. And now it's time for that all-important taste test, which you're going to see my hands sort of go up in amazement because I can't believe that this is actually pretty good, like palatable, like something that I actually ended up serving to a group of friends. Lose the pancake, swap the merguez for chorizo, and you've got a party starter and genuine threat to public health.